Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. We've got you covered. All right. Hello and welcome to the 270th 70th episode of the Alpha Insurance Georgia Drive for the GHSA State Title. Uh, today we're going to talk about all the week four games and then we're going to be joined in the first slot with Tom Kazi. He is Ola's head coach, second year with the Mustangs and they're on a bye but off to a tremendous 3-0 start. So it looks like Tom is ready. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, Coach, thanks so much for coming on. How's it going? Yes, sir. Going good. Going good. Awesome. So you are an Alabama product. I think that's where you played, got your coaching career started, and then uh, you came over to Ola last season. So just give us a little uh, look back just at your coaching time at Alabama and then everything you did there before coming over to Georgia? Well, uh, I actually I played 100 years ago at University of West Alabama at the time. It was Livingston University. And then uh, a student assistant G8 and full-time coach there for, for uh, until 99. And then left there in 99. I uh, was an assistant for one year at a small 4A school down in South Alabama, Daleville High School. I got my first head coaching job at Dallas County in 2000, and uh, we had a lot of really, really good players there, man, because if I was coaching today the way I coached then, I wouldn't keep a job, but uh, those guys, we, we were blessed. We won 10 games in our third year there, and then uh, went to Andalusia, 4A school down in South Alabama, and uh, we, we were able to have a lot of success. We had a lot of really good players that came through there during the time I was there, and we were, we were able to have success, and uh, Andalusia had had it years and years ago in the 70s, and we were able to get that back on top there. And then we left there and went to Demopolis, and I was there for eight years, our third year there, won a state championship in 5A. And uh, left there after eight years and went to Pelham High School, who had just become their own city system. And... Uh, they, they had separated from a county school system, and when we got there, we had 28 players playing 6 state football and uh, really had a great group of first-year freshmen that kind of led that program into where we were at, and we retired and, uh, a couple of years ago and came over to Ola High School and, uh, and wanted the challenge of, of, you know, we know how good football is in this state, and we know how good the coaching is. And, Wanted, wanted a challenge to come over here into this state, and we sure got one. And it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. We're just trying to grow this program from the ground up. Absolutely. And, I mean, I've been covering Georgia high school football for a little over a decade. I mean, Ola's had some really solid teams. They've always come off as competitive. It's just crazy to think that they haven't had that playoff success. And so – what was that um, interview process like? Uh, had you heard of Ola before the area? And then when did you find out you got the job? Well, I had a former teammate of mine, Tom Clark, who's the LC at North Cobb. His little brother had coached here. And uh, I knew about the community. I knew about uh, the, the pride they had in their athletics here and, and, and all things Ola. Uh, and uh, I saw an opportunity to come try to build this thing and, and playoff success is something we haven't had and uh and i think that's 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 uh that's, that's gonna come with our play once we understand that it's not about us it's about not about me it's about us and it's about the, taking this program to the next level and one of the things i think our coaches do a real job of is, is talking to our guys about leading down and making sure that we understand that the, the behind us you know, in, in really good good programs, you find that there's second generation players there, whether it be an uncle played there or their dad played there or an older brother played there. And we, and we don't have a lot of that because the school is relatively young. So we have to create that legacy here by bleeding it down from our from our upper guy upper level guys down to our second, third, fourth grade people here in our in our in our uh, old system. And uh, there's something that kind of intrigued me. I thought it would be a, a great challenge and a great opportunity, and, uh, and it sure has been. 
Yeah, and it's <clears throat> definitely been an exciting run. So still looking for that playoff win, but the team has made the playoffs the last four seasons. And then you guys have just had a really exciting start. I've seen videos from the game, the crowd supports there. You guys have a good product on the field. So what has impressed you just so far this season, seeing the team come out there and execute really on both sides of the ball extremely well? Well, I, I think that it's how hard we've played. Uh, I think our guys have played really, really hard, and uh, we we we've made uh, enough mistakes to fill up a bus, and 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 uh, but they've played really hard and overcome those mistakes. Uh, you know, we you said we we are we are three and zero, oh, and and last year at this time we were two and one, and uh, I think that, that we've grown about who we are as a team. Uh, I I see guys excited when other players make plays. I see our boundary being all in, and it's helped. We've had uh, – we've stayed healthy. We've been we've been blessed to be uh, healthy this year, and uh, it's not uh, – you know, this time of year you play three or four games, you play the Jamboree game, and it's, it's still a game or a scrimmage. And, uh, so we've been blessed to stay healthy. We, we've got to keep growing. Uh, one of the things we're hammering our guys about right now is really just – you have to flush yesterday. If we came in here and have a great practice yesterday, then that, that really doesn't matter. Uh, today's really all that matters. And so I think that kind of caught us last year uh, after we lost to Jackson in a heartbreaking loss. We were still limping around here a couple weeks later when we went to the east side and, and they beat the brakes off of us, man. And then you have an off week and we're still thinking about that. And you got, of course, everybody knows about how good Warner Roberts is and can be. And you had those guys next. So. What I think we've done a really good job of this year is flushing yesterday, whether it's a really good day or a really bad day. Be present, be where your feet are, and be ready to go today because uh, the previous play, the previous day really don't matter. And I think that's been a difference this year than last year. Yeah, and this is an interesting point of your season because you have the bye this week, you're going to play east side, and then you have that other bye, and then it's just straight on region week after week after that. So what are some things that – you can take advantage of just having just one game kind of in this three week period? Well, uh, you know, it's tough. I, I, I really don't like it. If I could do it any different, I sure would. But that was the schedule you set before we got here, and that's what we'll deal with. But I think it's been good for us. You know, I mentioned earlier, we're starting to get a little banged up and, and being able to get some guys out of practice and get them in treatment, and knowing there's not a game on Friday to push and get ready to go play. And, so maybe we use that to heal up a little bit. But I can tell you this, we better heal because next week after uh, playing Eastside last year, they do a great job and they're physical and they're going to come in here and uh, play play 48 minutes for sure. So we've tried to get some guys healthy this week and we've really only worked on us. All that busload of mistakes I mentioned a few minutes ago, we, we're, we've been trying to work to correct those things, uh, get better in special teams this week and get better in the fundamentals of football. Yeah, man, 5A has been so fun to watch already this season. It's one of my favorite overall classifications. Tons of great players, tons of parity. But I want to ask you about your quarterback this season. It looks like he's a senior, uh, Jake, Jake Holmes. I don't have the stats in front of me, but what have you seen just so far from him? Unbelievable leadership. He, he's done a really good job of leading our football team. Uh, in, in three weeks, we, we've – First game we go out we, and we, we had a really good night passing the football. And the next week we come out and we run the football. And last week is a little mixture of both. And uh, I think what he's done a really good job. But we, we're playing with two uh, freshman running backs right now that are really talented, but they're freshmen. And Jake's done a really good job of making sure those guys stay, uh, stay level, stay grounded, and understand that there's going to be times when we go play that we're going to throw the football and we're not going to run as much or we're going to – just be patient and you'll get your opportunities to carry it. I think he's done a really good job of that. And uh, he's done a great job of taking what the defense gives him. And, and I think that comes, like you mentioned, he's a senior. His third year to play quarterback. And he started some games as a sophomore quarterback. And the last two years, he started every one of them for us. So uh, I don't think you you can't put a, a price on that. that. The leadership and the experience that he brings is, uh, is invaluable. Certainly. And – Obviously, the two freshman running backs, that's a, a big deal, getting that first varsity experience. You talked about uh, some of the mistakes you've seen over the first three weeks. I mean, what are some of the things that you guys have been working on improving? 
Well, well, uh, unforceable errors, the, 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 uh, the procedure penalties, uh, jumping off sides, uh, missed assignments. We're, we're, we're starting uh, three, four new offensive linemen this year. We, we graduated four out of five last year. Missed assignments there. Uh, wrong first steps. Uh, we've been blessed with a turnover bug, and, and we, we're, I think we're plus six, plus seven, <coughs> excuse me, on the year with that. And just procedural things, things that you see early in the season, uh, especially out of young players and new starters, the guys who don't have a whole lot of varsity reps. The, I, 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 it's, it's the same ones, and we, and we have a chance to slow down and correct those this week and actually get more ones versus ones this week and try to make as much of a scrimmage situation as we could and uh, try to correct those things, get get our first steps down. Not gaining ground on our first step. Hat placement, hand placement in the wrong place. Those are things that when you play the east sides of Warner Robins, Dutch Towns, Jones Counties, that Union Grove, Locust Grove, those guys, that'll, that'll cost you a ball game. And uh, we've got to get better at that, and I think we have. And then back to your quarterback, uh, Jake Holmes. He's a pretty big kid, right? Like 6'3", 225, I'm seeing. Yes, sir. Okay, so how is Hell yeah, that just he, helped him out there? Hey, listen, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, how has his size just helped him out there? Well, he, he's a he's a big, strong, physical kid anyway. You know, not not just being size-wise, but he's a physical kid. He, he's a heck of an athlete. He He's an uh, unbelievable goalie in soccer. And uh, so he's a two-sport guy here and does a great job in both sports. But no doubt his physical size has helped. And it's, we, we run him a lot. And uh, there's times when we're throwing football and things are covered up downfield and we get pressure on him. He, he'll tuck it and run it. And uh, he's a load to tackle. Uh, we've tried to talk to him a little bit about once he gets out in the open field and gets all he can get at getting down. Uh, but I think the competitor in him sometimes he he doesn't do that and it, it worries me to death because he is a senior quarterback and you don't want him, you don't want to lose him early in the season because of an extra two yards. But uh, I think he's I think he's done a really good job of that and helped us. He's helped us in, like I said earlier in the leadership area that with all the young players we have. That's awesome. And so when I hear that he's a goalie also, and I, I knew he played soccer, but. He's got to have a strong leg. I mean, because goalies can really kick it. Has he ever done kicking well, duties? Well, he punts for us. He's our punter. Okay. We do a rugby style punt, and part of, I, I love the protection part of it. Number one, but it's perfect for what a goalie does. If you ever watch a goalie when he catches the ball in the, in the uh, near the net, he usually is running to his right or his left and dropping the ball and, and kicking the mess out of it. And that's exactly what we ask him to do on a rugby punt. And, I think it gives the defense a little bit of angst too when they're over there and the starting quarterback's the punter. So it, yeah. he, he, yes, sir, he does that for us. Well, I don't think you guys have been punting too much uh, so far this season, uh, but yeah, that's awesome. I'd love to see that. And then talk about the defense though. It looks like they've been able to have tons of success as well. You got a shutout, seven points in one game, fourteen another, and really have put in like a, a solid effort for both halves. Well, I, you know, Coach Tyler Technips, our defensive coordinator, and their st our staff does a great job of getting them ready for who we're playing on Fridays. And and we, we're we right the opposite over there uh, than we are on offense. Our defensive line, the all-returners, uh, we got a, a couple guys in there, Malik Love, who has a couple of offers, UAB and, and uh, Navy, and, and Lindrick Barber, who has some offers and is committed to Coastal Carolina on the defensive line. And those guys do a really good job up front, and we've got some – uh, a couple of juniors started inside linebacker forwards and senior on the edge and in the secondary. So we've uh, Justin Chavis back at safety and the new starter Michael Knight at corner and Talon Cole at outside. Like we got him as a senior. We've got we've got several seniors and upperclassmen playing for us on that side of the ball, which has really helped. And but they've done a really good job of playing extremely hard, extremely fast. And as long as we keep doing that, we're going to be okay. And then I uh, want to ask you just about year two. I mean, what's the biggest difference you've seen so far just uh, from the team, um, some guys that saw action last year, and just guys that you're really excited for, just seeing what they're going to be able to do for you guys this year? Well, I've mentioned the young guys. I'm excited to see the growth of it that we can have with them this year and how good of players they can be by the end of the year. And uh, the difference in last year and this year, I think it's just being year two. 
it's a trust it's a trust factor you know those those, those guys last year the senior group last year i was the third head coach in three years and and so you know we we, we openly talked to them about that we openly talked to them about you got to trust us you got we got to be committed to each other we got to believe in the same things and, and i and that's tough that's tough those guys had walked in this building in the three consecutive seasons as 10th 11th and 12th graders and had a different guy that was the head coach and uh so I think the biggest difference is probably that that the, the kids that are going through a full off season with it with us and and getting to know us and trust us and they see the things that we're that we're selling and telling that that those things if they'll do those things then they got a chance to be a better player and a better person and, and then obviously a better team call so uh, that's probably the biggest difference just that trust which no fault of those kids that were that were leaving here but. That'd be tough, man. I had two head coaches in a four-year period, and they had three. So uh, that, that's tough. Certainly. And then was there a lot of staff that stayed around? I mean, did you have to replace a lot of the assistant roles? Well, we had uh, we had three coaches stay, and, and we, we replaced everybody else. And a couple of the guys who went through spring with us uh, ended up leaving here and going and taking other jobs other places. But uh, – we were able to hire guys in here and uh, uh, really blessed, really blessed. We got an unbelievable staff. We got men who really care about these kids. We got men who know football and probably, and most important, like I said, they care about kids and they're good at developing relationships with them. Uh, I believe everything on this planet revolves around relationships, whether it's with your faith, with your Lord and Savior, whether it's with a, your, your daughter, your son, your, your wife, the coaching staff, the coaches and players, uh, our relationship with the administration. Those things have to be genuine, and I think we've got genuine men there that that truly love these players and uh, care for what happens to them and, and want the best for them. And you mentioned your defensive coordinator, Tyler Technip. Um, what's that relationship been like? Uh, when did you first get connected with him? Well, Tyler was a, a guy that came rec to, recommended to me by some friends of mine over this way, and he had been at uh, he'd been at a couple different places, and and we. He, he is a Henry County guy. His dad was a head coach at one time at Eagles Landing. He played at Eden. Uh, coach Sean Jones, who is our, our safety coach and special teams coordinator, he and Jones, had, Coach Jones actually coached him, and they actually uh, worked together over there. And uh, so we, we were blessed. Coach Jones was already here, and he was able to talk to me about Tyler. And we interviewed him. And, and uh, Chopper Clark, who had been a defensive coordinator here, at Ola, which is my buddy's uh, brother, had, knew him and recommended him to me as well. And uh, we brought him in, and it was automatic, instant click, and uh, really blessed to have Coach Technip here. And then who are some of the guys just in the skill positions in the perimeter that you've seen just step up and become playmakers? Well, at, on offensively, Jason Goodrum and, and Justin Lewis at our slot receivers. And uh, we've had uh, Timothy Clark at wide receiver, Shane Rawls. Uh, Markel Joinville has had a really good uh, season. Those guys are our four, four outside guys. And uh, at running back, uh, we've really played with three. Caden Young is a senior, but it's his first year to play. And then Caden Way is a freshman running back. And Nigel Newkirk there has had a really good year. Those, those two freshmen have had really good seasons. You can see them getting more comfortable as the season wore on. And uh, like I mentioned earlier in the secondary, Justin Chavis and, and Michael Knight in the secondary and, and Caden Potts at our other corner has had a really good year. And uh, th those guys, Michael Knight, Caden Potts, Justin Chavis, and Max Sanders in the secondary, th th those guys have matured so much in a year. Uh, there's two seniors in Caden Potts and, and uh, Justin Chavis. Those guys have matured as leaders. They matured as people. And, and I think that's a big – that's been a big reason why our defense has improved so much on, on that side of the ball. And then you had mentioned some of the second generational guys. Are there any players on the team that had relatives that were on some of those early Ola teams? No, so, well, we got some guys that uh, may have had a relative, a, bro a brother, but no, you know, no second generation guys. This school opened in 2006. That's right. So it's been. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's really, really be hard to have that. But we've had some that had their brothers that played here. Okay, and then I mean, we we're talking about your quarterback. He's playing goalie. I mean, Ola's been 
really solid across the board athletically. So is that something that was common at uh, Pelham or these other Alabama schools, just having a lot of two-sport, three-sport guys? Well, yes, sir. We we uh, we really try to push our guys into getting into, into second sports. That when we left Pelham, we had uh, – it was 78, 79 percent of our guys that played uh, second sport, and uh, I, I really believe this. You know, you hear coaches all the time talking about always recruiting, especially when you're taking over school that doesn't have a lot of second generation players. I think the greatest tool you have is your players going into other rooms, and that was evident this year when I mentioned Caden Young. We had three or four baseball guys come out, a couple of soccer players come out, basketball players come out, and, and track. Our guys go into those other sports, and if they're the right kind of people, they're doing the right things in those locker rooms, and they're constantly recruiting whether they know they're doing it or not. So we highly encourage our guys to get involved in other sports, especially if they can help Ola win state championships in any other sport. We highly encourage them to be involved. And uh, everywhere we've been, we've done that, and I think it's, I think it's the beauty of high school football or high school athletics, actually. You know, we, we try to go with support. And we're off tonight, and <laughs> – so we're, my wife and I were going to go watch the softball team play, which is new for us in Georgia playing softball in the, in the fall in, in Alabama in the spring. I hadn't got a chance to go watch Coach Lider, kick lighter team play, and they got a team, and we're looking forward to going tonight. Nice. Well, it should be a, a good night. The weather's kind of cooling down a little bit. Well, Coach, yep. thank you so much for, yeah. for coming on. I really appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy this week off. We're certainly going to be following you in the games ahead. you got some exciting region matchups also. But thank you so much. We'll have to uh, do it again soon. Hey, listen, thank you all for what you do for high school athletics. And if there's anything we can do for you down this way, let us know. Awesome. All right. Well, there goes Coach Kazi and – yeah, I wanted to get him on not only because it's an off week, but it is an exciting start, um, an opportunity to go 4-0 uh, if they can beat East Side next week. And then, man, let's just go over the region real quick before we get to the, the break. Warner Robins, Jones County, Eagles Landing, Union Grove, Locust Grove, and Dutchtown in the finale. So they earned that playoff spot last year. And then I believe – yeah, they're in Region 2, so they got matched up with Region 1, which uh, off the top of my head, that's Ware County Coffee. So that positioning in the seedings is very, very important. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more on the other side. Let's go ahead and thank our sponsor, Alpha Insurance. What you doing? Hey, I'm in the middle hey. of the show. Just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to just focus on the week four schedule. Ola's off this week. There's some other teams off. I think North Oconee, which we are not talking about them enough. They have been so impressive. I just got to give them a shout out real quick because, I mean, last year made it to the semis, I believe, for the first time in school history. Uh, lost a very close game. They were definitely a state championship contender. So this season, they beat Oconee County 29-12, to big rivalry game right there. And then South Forsyth, a 7A school. That was a 7-3 to game last year. North Oconee came out 35-3, to absolutely dominated. And then um, I'm going to highlight this game a bunch next week. They're opening the region against Madison County, who I think is probably the toughest competition in Region 8. Uh, they're also undefeated, and I expect them to get a number two seed if they get knocked off by North Oconee. But I think they're going to give them a really tough game. Uh, the Red Raiders look outstanding this season. All right, so looking at um, the week four results, uh, last night 
A huge win for Millergrove over Class 7A Campbell, who's had an intriguing start. They dominated Meadow Creek. Uh, they had competitive games before that where they beat Kennesaw Mountain. They've been playing really well, but Miller Grove, another Thursday night victory after defeating Douglas. So Miller Grove lost to Tucker week one, I believe, or it might have been Arabia Mountain. Uh, but anyway, they're three and one now, a 38 to 18 victory. I really am interested to see how Miller Grove does this year. I think they're going to uh, make the playoffs and uh, they've been impressive. They have a lot of talent. Uh, they looked great at the Atlanta Bash. Uh, beating Douglas last week was huge off a short week, and they just picked up another big one. So watch out for them. Uh, some of the other results last night, Glen Academy had a big win over Baker County in the, I think it's like the Border Bowl, or it's, I think, the first games of a Georgia Florida series. But uh, they're 3-1 and one now. So that's a big win for them. Uh, Worth County, 49-0. Applin County, Wayne County. I believe that game got canceled last week because of the storms. Wayne County is legit. They're ranked very high in Class 4A. Applin County is also a top 10 team. And Applin County got the 21-7 victory. I think that says a lot about uh, their defense holding Wayne County and that Russian attack to just seven points is outstanding. All right, so speaking of Russian attacks, let's talk about our feature game tonight, Roswell against Milton. So do I think this is going to be a very close game? Yes. I think it could be even a one-point game game when i first saw the matchup i was thinking maybe a 24 23 uh, roswell victory last year it was very low scoring um the question is is it going to be a shootout or is it going to be another defensive um, struggle so far milton has been in those every week they were in a defensive battle with collins hill got the win Made a ton of big plays on the defensive side of the ball. They played Western Florida after that. They fell 14-7. to They absolutely had opportunities to win that game. Uh, had some uh, tough breaks on third downs at the end. Uh, some penalties. And then defensively, that's not what cost them that game at all. It was the, the seven points offensively and some of those mistakes. So... You have this Milton defense that really no team has had success against so far. Well, then what about the Milton offense? Well, we haven't seen it really hit its rhythm. Um, what was the term you used yesterday describing their offense? Um, I thought it was perfect. Yeah, it's like... You see the talent, but it's like the drives aren't stalling. But you know, like, once they get going, they can really catch fire. And, I mean, I like Luke Nickel. I like those receivers. They just have not had a consistent run game. And that is the biggest uh, question mark. And here's the thing. That was true last year also. Um, Milton in the past, before Coach Reeves took over, they've been – a primarily rushing offense. Well, that changed. You have a Miami committed quarterback, and that didn't hurt them last year, kind of changing their offensive philosophy, uh, working different things, getting it out in the perimeter. Uh, they were phenomenal. But when you're playing a Roswell team that is very good defensively, that's what Coach Pruitt focuses on, and – he really sees his offense almost as the complement to his defense. He wants to control the clock. He wants to have those two-for-one situations in terms of possessions at the end of halves. He doesn't want to give the opponent a lot of opportunities. Milton is going to need to establish the run. They had Scott Moskowitz last year, who was a physical workhorse, 
an unsung hero in that offense that could give you three yards reliably on any carry and then um, keep the defense honest. Well, if they come out, and here's the problem, by not being able to run the ball reliably on first and second down, let's just say there's a penalty, a procedure penalty or a hold. They're going to be forced into a third and long. Roz was going to come come after them, and that's just going to be really tough. And then that's when you can get into these situations where you can turn the ball over, which I think Milton has done extremely well. They're going to probably be one of the best teams in 7A in terms of generating the turnovers. But if they're putting themselves in these tough situations where they're forced to pass the ball, Roswell's is going to know where the sticks are. They're going to bring the heat. And obviously, uh, the coaching staff is familiar with um, this offense, with these playmakers, and they'll have a great game plan. So I'm going to pick Roswell in this one. I think it's going to be close. I would not be surprised if Milton wins. And then the other thing I'll say, uh, this will be probably the 16th game we broadcasted. I think this will be the most physical game we've had yet. Uh, Not just up front. I think you're going to see it with um, the secondaries. Man, Milton, their secondary can lay hits. I've been impressed with what I've seen with Roswell so far. And I think um, both teams have the skill players that can kind of play that physical style as well. Um, On Roswell, it's no secret. I think Dylan Williams is one of the clutchest receivers in the state. He can make absolutely incredible catches in key situations too. He did it last year when he was just a junior. Um, Stepping in, K.J. Smith took over after um, Robbie Roper's senior year. He made the game-changing catch in their season opener against Denmark and obviously in other big games too. Uh, When Roswell scrimmaged Walton in the spring and absolutely dominated them, I think it was 52-13. to Um, Obviously, some of that was with the the second stringers. It wasn't – you can't completely put too much into that uh, result. But Dylan Williams went off multiple one-handed catches, two touchdowns, over 200 yards receiving. He is going to be a problem. And K.J. Smith has been off to just an incredible start. Um, You look at Roswell's offensive production this season uh, through the first three weeks compared to last season, and it's just historic. Let's just look at it real quick. All right, so a year ago, they had 35-10 win over Denmark. Denmark's quarterback went down that game. wasn't really a fair matchup. 35-14 35-14 over Centennial, 24-20 over Marietta. So they were 3-0 heading into the Milton game. This year, 41-0 Denmark, 71-7 over Centennial, 51-14 over Marietta. Totally dominant. K.J. Smith, uh, he's been just lights out, had I think seven touchdowns in the Centennial game. And then Marietta, they look just as dominant. But then the big playmaker in the Marietta game was uh, Sinquan Smith. One more time, that's Sinquan Smith. Had a ton of all-purpose yards. Really, if you looked at the stat line, you couldn't tell if he was a receiver or a running back. He did both that well. So we've seen similar playmakers like that. Reminds me of Bryce Hicks. Uh, Some of these guys that can take 20 carries or do it in the passing game in the slot role. Uh, Nakai Davenport starting to get more involved. And then if you look last year at this matchup, I think uh, Sinquan Smith did not play in it. I think that was one of the only games he missed. Let me just double check real quick.
So I think for sure he's a player to watch tonight. Uh, let's see. Last year in the Roswell game. Uh, Nikai Davenport last year had 21 carries, 127 yards. Uh, no Smith. And let me just make sure that he was back to action the following week against Johns Creek. Yep, and then the week after the Milton game, 13 carries, 97 yards, and two touchdowns. And then Nakai was out that game. So I think if you have both of them healthy, that's that's Roswell at its full strength. And they're going to need both of them to have a consistent rushing attack against one of the most aggressive and capable defensive fronts we've seen. And Milton's defensive line is just scary good. Um, they've had absolutely incredible talent on that defensive line for years, back to the, the Carl Lawson days. And now it's uh, no exception. You got Caleb Ellis, uh, who will play on the defensive end, 6'2", 265, physical, athletic, all over the place. You got Caleb Bell, Terrence Spencer, Six foot 265, and then Christian Pancake Hunter, the freshman, who has been such a standout that he, I think he started in the rotation, but I think he has been promoted to the starter. 6'1, 240. Uh, he played in our Georgia Elite. He's considered, I think, the top prospect in that uh, freshman class defensively. Has a tremendous future and this is obviously the biggest game he has played in so far um, starting against this Roswell offense televised game he'll be wearing number 98 and it will be exciting to see the type of energy he brings uh, how he handles this game um, key third down plays just uh, filling the gaps beating the blocks off it will be Quite a storyline to see him on this stage. And then, um, so yeah, Milton's defense, they're the real deal. But I think it will be uh, Sinquan Smith playing this year where he missed last year, wanting to come out. And he's fresh off a tremendous performance. And then K.J. Smith, how will he handle it at the quarterback position? He's got a lot of games under his belt. He knows this is a big one. Uh, he's been lights out not only through the first three weeks, but during spring, during the summer, and has really just been outstanding. So great matchup tonight. I'm going to change from 24 to 23. Let's see. I'm going to go with 28-24 Roswell. And please do not be mad at me if, if I'm wrong. That's just what I think. I thought El Rome would be able to compete with Carrollton last week. Wasn't right about that one. You so, wrong. yeah, I was wrong, and I admit it. <laughs> but shout out to them. But it's going to be a great game. Tune in 8 o'clock. And I think it's the best game on the schedule this week, bar none. Uh, you're going to get to see, yeah, we got it on TV. Top 10 matchup, incredible rivalry, the amount of talent on both teams. And then if you just look at this rivalry historically, it's been interesting. The year Milton won it all, 2018, Roswell beat them. When Roswell has had some of their better seasons, I think it was – probably one of Adam Clack's first years. It's like Roswell will go into it ranked higher. And then, because, yeah, they used to be in the same region. And then Milton would get the big win. Well, heading into this one, Milton has won four straight. So something's got to give. Roswell wants this win. Uh, they're ranked number two, I believe, in uh, 6A heading into it. And then Milton... Let's just make sure. Okay, never mind. They're number five in the consensus. 
I have him up there at number two. And then Milton looks like uh, number eight. So the game's going to impact the rankings for sure. And it's just going to be really fun, a great atmosphere. Be sure to tune in. So let's look at uh, some of the other games that we'll be tracking closely tonight. All right, so one game that I'm interested in that is a region opener is going to be the McDonough and Mount Zion Jonesboro game. Uh, Sam Crenshaw did a great story on GPB on it. I have a quick story up that went uh, yesterday, and then I mentioned it uh, in my week four preview blog, but McDonough has a chance. They've been around for 73 years. They've had 10 win seasons, but they have a chance to go 3-0 and for the first time in school history. They beat Union Grove last week 28-23, uh, to and then had another big win over Locust Grove week one. Um, last year, McDonough dominated this game. I expect them to win tonight. Uh, they beat Union Grove for the first time in school history last week. They have a good chance to get the win tonight. And then their head coach, Rodney Cofield, he's been a veteran coach for a while. He was at Douglas. He was at Booker T. Washington. Uh, so he's coming He's come over there and has done a great job. I think this is his third year, but you look at the quarterback position for McDonough. That is Terrell Riley. Uh, he has started the last two seasons, so every year with Coach Cofield there. He's been named Region 5 Athlete of the Year his sophomore and junior season. And then he's off to an absolutely stellar start this year for his senior season once again that's terrell riley i think he had like 400 all-purpose yards he's just been really impressive he is the driving force of that team and he will definitely be a player to watch uh, throughout the season but then if mcdonough gets this historic win tonight you got to give credit to a player like that who has been the key to their um their success these last few seasons. So uh, McDonough and Mount Zion Jonesboro, just one intriguing matchup. You got Blessed Trinity at St. Pius. BT is off to an outstanding start, and we have the BT Maris game coming up. So I would like to see uh, BT head into that one undefeated. And then Maris, uh, their only loss so far came to Gainesville week one. They've looked really uh, impressive so far after that and Marist is going to be coming off a Woodward Academy matchup tonight they're going to host that one uh, Woodward Academy their only loss came uh, out of state and I don't know I think that Marist defense has been the real deal this year that Gainesville loss is certainly not uh, looking too bad right now just as good as they've been and so two great matchups right there, BT, St. Pius, Woodward against Marist, and then the Marist-BT game next week. That is great stuff right there. All right, the only battle of number ones this week, Ware County at Benedictine. Class 5A number one, Ware County. Class 4A number one, Benedictine. Both are defending state champs and they have played the last few seasons. Um, when Benedictine won their first title, uh, well, they've won before, but in terms of their back-to-back, -back, uh, they beat Ware County that season, then Ware County got the win this last year. And Ware County is actually the only Georgia team that has beaten Benedictine the last three seasons. So it will be interesting to see if Benedictine can uh, pull it off again, but it should be a great matchup once again. Um, outstanding what the cadets have been able to do, and that would be quite a statement. All right, you got Walton returning to action. They will be at Pope. Let's see what happens this time. Last year, Jeremy Hicklinski did not throw an incompletion in this game. Walton has dominated its first two contests this year. 
Um, the blowout over Grayson, the blowout over Brookwood, they had a buy. Let's see if they can do it again. And Pope has been, um, they look significantly better under Coach Sullivan. Um, they had a close out in, I think, the last two. All right, you got Sprayberry at Kell. We talked about that matchup a lot on Wednesday. Sprayberry has a chance to go 4 0 for the first time since 1989. Um, I think they're 1 in 10 all time against Kell. And the intriguing storyline in this one is Kamari Nix. So last year, this game was really close, but Kamari Nix was the quarterback for Sprayberry. Uh, he had a ton of rushing yards through his first touchdown passes of the season and really um, made it difficult for Kell in that matchup. Well, he transferred over to Kell and was going to play uh, defensive back and running back. But as you know, Bryce Clavin is off on the U.S. baseball circuit. And so Kamari Nix is going to be starting at quarterback for Kell against his former team who is undefeated and really looking to get this win. I think it'll be interesting. It's going to have to be up to that Sprayberry uh, defense disrupting Kamari. They know how athletic he is. Uh, they know how dangerous some of those playmakers are. Uh, primarily, um, you got Peyton Zachary, you got Kyle Vaca, who has had pretty much a, a long touchdown in every single game so far. It's been a huge deep threat. Kamari has the arm talent to stretch the field. And then I like Kell's defense. I like Justin Logan. I think their secondary is tremendous. But it really will be about that pass protection. If Kell's offensive line can play solid, uh, just play within their game, I think Kell's going to win that one. But it is a rivalry game and definitely one we should all watch. All right, Sandy Creek at East Coweta. I think a lot of people will probably just pick uh, Sandy Creek in this one. But East Coweta... Uh, they're also undefeated right now. They are a 7 8 team. I think they did win this matchup last year, or it was a really close one. I think it will be interesting to watch. Sandy Creek has been tremendous offensively uh, running the ball so far. Um, probably uh, Sandy Creek likely has one of the top rushing attacks in the state so far this season. They put up just ridiculous yards. I think they had like 500 four rushing yards their first week. Uh, so that'll be a solid matchup right there. All right, Prince Avenue Christian at Monroe area. That's a nice top 10 matchup and challenge for Prince Ave. Uh, we'll be watching that one closely. Uh, Pebblebrook at Rome. Let's see how Rome responds uh, this week after falling to Carrollton. Uh, Pebblebrook's gotten off to a shaky start as well. I don't think Georgia commit Dwight uh, Phillips, one of the fastest players in the country, I don't think he's played for them so far. So um, I know I read week one he had a potential um, ankle situation, and it was kind of a day-to-day -day or game-time decision. But we'll see if Pebblebrook can get some of their um, – their weapons back and then um, with Rome let's see how that backfield looks Chance Arthur they're probably top back uh, went down in the first half against Carrollton last week he was able to walk off I don't think it was season ending so let's see if uh, he can come back we'll see if Rome can get that victory all right Peachtree Ridge at Winder Barrow Huge game right here. So, Winder Bear is undefeated. Uh, Peachy Ridge also off to a 3-0 start. Uh, Darnell Kelly, their sophomore quarterback, is pretty much pacing the state at this point. Put up like 34 points and a half against a Loganville, one of the better defenses in the state. Uh, they've been, I think, probably the most impressive a team so far and have just shattered expectations. They beat second year week one, uh, dominated in the Lanier game, and if you just look at the last three weeks, 
you can see, okay, well, this team not only is off to a great start, it seems like they're getting better every week. And so that is a great sign for them. Um, they have a pretty favorable schedule if they can get this win. And then you're looking at a potential region championship matchup in a few weeks against Norcross, which would be a heck of a game. And that's just really impressive uh, what Kelly's been able to do uh, this season and he's got coach Helmerk as head coach and this is definitely a Peachtree Ridge team that you need to keep track of this season and then I think they'll be even more dangerous in the years to come um, and probably will emerge as a state championship contender. All right, Oconee County at Jefferson. Uh, we'll see what happens in that one. Uh, Jefferson has really been impressive so far, though, and Sammy Brown has been unstoppable. Uh, you got North Cobb at Marietta. North Cobb is coming off that Buford loss. Uh, I think they're going to be very motivated in this one. Uh, Marietta is coming off the loss to... Who was that? Roswell. Yeah, Roswell. All right, Northeast at Carver-Columbus. Northeast had the win over Class 2A number 1 Fitzgerald last week. It was the first time in uh, Northeast history that they beat a top seed. And then you have Carver-Columbus um, at, I think they're at like number 8 in Class 3A right now. I think they have a good chance at getting this victory, and that would shake up the rankings for sure, and that is at Carver-Columbus. Uh, another game we'll be watching closely. All right, you got Norcross at Archer. Let's see if Norcross can continue cruising, uh, see how Archer responds uh, from its loss last week. Uh, Madison County at Cherokee Bluff, a good region opener. I mentioned Madison County has their game against North Oconee coming up, so let's see if they can get that win and go into that big region battle undefeated. Uh, Jackson County at Mountain View. Mountain View's played in a ton of close games so far. They've lost some heartbreakers. They got Justin Green on that defensive line. And then you have Jackson County, who has, I believe, come off back-to-back -back double overtime games. Uh, so you have two teams that have just played in close games every week. Uh, I think we should watch that one for sure. All right, Gainesville at Clark Central. Clark Central is off to a tremendous start. And for Gainesville, Gavin Hall has been lights out for them, uh, doing it all offensively. Um, it will be a great test for Clark Central. We'll see exactly how good they are going up against an experienced and outstanding Gainesville team. Uh, Lee County at Colquitt County, another great matchup right there. Uh, Colquitt County has been just between NICAR and those offensive weapons, they have been in midseason form, to say the least. All right, Collins Hill at Cedar Grove. Uh, Collins Hill absolutely dominated Brookwood last week. I think Brookwood had less than 30 yards rushing, two or four passing, just complete shutdown. Uh, they lost to Milton week one, had a bye, played Brookwood, and then uh, I think this game against Cedar Grove is personal for them. Uh, last year, if you recall, they were the defending state champs. They lost pretty much all their starters. Had a young team. Cedar Grove whooped them. They're going to want to come in and send a message. I think Collins Hill has a good chance, and they looked really solid offensively against Brookwood last week. A lot of balance, and then uh, defensively, they feel like that front uh, can shut down any team's rushing attack and turn their opponents into a one-dimensional team. So it will be all about what uh, Colson's able to do for that Cedar Grove offense, which has been putting up a lot of points, but the defense has looked vulnerable. But if Collins Hill's defense can... Uh, disrupt them. I think they might avenge last year's uh, lopsided loss. Uh, Calhoun at Cedartown, that just should be a great matchup right there. Cedartown has had some tough losses to uh, Callaway 
and then uh, Calhoun has bounced back from its season opening loss to BT. Should be a good matchup right there. And then Central Carroll at McIntosh for sure, a game to watch. Uh, Central Carroll's looking like a top 10 team in 4A. They're undefeated right now. Offense has been really impressive. Their freshman phenom at quarterback. And then McIntosh is a good 5A challenger. And then Central Carroll is in that same region with, um, I think it's Region 7 with Cedartown. So that's going to be a huge matchup to watch. And uh, don't be surprised if that ends up being a region championship game. All right, let's see if there's any more region games to watch this week. I mentioned, yeah, I think Pace Academy, love it in 4A. That would be one to watch. Uh, Stockbridge and Luella is another one. Um, let me just make sure. All right, let's start at 4A, and then I'll go over the other ones. All right, the region games in 4A, we got Love at Pace Academy, the Mount Zion McDonough game, Stockbridge Luella, and then Woodland Stockbridge at Hampton. And then we have the region games in Region 8, Cherokee Bluff, Madison County, East Hall, Chesity, Walnut Grove, uh, North Hall. Uh, there's not going to be any in 7A quite yet. In 6A, uh, East Paulding and Paulding County will be a region opener. And that is this week. That's the lone region game in 6A before we get things started next week. Um, in 5A, no region games. Let's just check. Uh, 3A this is the last one I'll check. Yep, none. So just a handful of region games uh, this week. And then it looks like week five, that's when we'll start to get into it a little more. So, And we'll have a, a great matchup uh, with BT and Maris. But be sure to tune in tonight. It uh, should be an outstanding game. I'm excited. Go to Score Atlanta's YouTube page also. We have last week's game. The Carrollton Rome one is uploaded. You can watch it. And I just think that is uh, such a great thing, and it's so convenient to be able to go back and watch those games uh, for the players. And then I've gone back and watched um, plenty of them so far. So we've got great stuff. Please subscribe, check it out, and then we'll see you tonight live from Roswell. See you next week. What you doing? Hey. Just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered.